What happens when you buy a pen, forget to review it, sell the pen, and then keep skipping over the note in your journal telling you to buy another one? Well, because it really deserves a review. If you're me, then you find yourself buying another Pilot Custom Heritage 92. If you live in the land of Freedom Eagles, then one thing you know about is the high cost of healthcare, even if you have coverage, either personally or through your employer. When I had my first PCH-92, it ended up having to be sold to fill the gap between medical bills and everything else. Things did stabilize quickly after that happened, but for some reason, I slow played replacing that pen, and I don't know why. It's honestly one of my most favorite piston fillers out there, and Pilot nibs tend to be the most consistent that I've ever used. It's funny to think that the same company that can make the G2 can turn around and make something that makes you want to pay a hundred to a thousand times more. Luckily, today we are on the smaller end of that markup. I do need to preface this review though. I, oh, I like to occasionally try my luck on buying pens and other stationary items through Amazon when I see that the price is good. I'm batting 50-50 on getting what I paid for, so beware of that when purchasing fine goods like this. That said, if you are willing to take a chance on that particular market, then you can get one of these for anywhere between $105 and $220. So let's go ahead, dive in, and take a look at the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Starting off, the PCH comes in a plain outer box, much like the Pilot Explorer that we looked at. This one is missing the outer sticker, but that really has no impact on the final product. Inside is the hard plastic inner box with the Pilot logo um, in some type of gold print. And if we look at the profile of the box, I don't know, it's less boxy and more rounded here on the top. But when it comes to packaging, I'm not a fan of this. I would much prefer a flat top inner box so I don't feel obligated to keep the outer sleeve. With this system, all that goes out the window. Aside from that though, opening the box, if I can get it open, shows the Karen use guide, the plastic sleeve that the pen came in, and yeah, there it is, the little placard that shows the nib size. And with the pen being a piston filler, that's pretty much it. There are no included cartridges or any additional fluff. Considering all the extra paper that I've gotten with other piston fillers, this is a nice break, and, well, actually, you know, that's going to do it for the box. I'm going to shake things up for the pen overview today and bring out a special guest. This is Master Chief. $20 on Amazon, by the way. When he isn't out making horrible TV shows or suffering through a lackluster video game, he doubles as my pen holder. And today, he's going to keep that job while we go through talking about the PCH. Let me get that set up. There we go. Okay, first observation is that if you are going for a flashy pen with intricate designs or materials that have a rainbow look to them, then this isn't it. This pen is a nice demonstrator blue with smoke accents on the logoless filler knob and finial. The chrome trim is a nice pairing to the blue transparent resin, and as a complete package, I find myself constantly pleased with this one taking the main spot on my desk. That said, I do cycle my pens every other month or so, but the last two months with this one in particular have been a phenomenal experience, both in writing and aesthetically. Speaking of writing, this pen is sporting a 14 karat number 5 nib, which, based on the stamping over here, was made in December of 2021. Side tangent, I really do like that I am easily able to see the age of these nibs, and I wish more brands would start doing this. There are probably a few more that do, but I don't know of any off the top of my head, so yeah. Aside from that though, we do have more chrome trim here separating the body from the section, and that pretty much covers the aesthetics, so let's look at the size metrics. Normally, I would compare this to a 1911 or an Oroloid, but today I want to strip it down a little, and while we have our good friend Master Chief helping us out, keep it as a single pen overview. 
capped, we are looking at a length of 137 millimeters and 21 grams. And without the cap, that goes down to 122 millimeters and 13 grams. Most importantly, though, is this section. It's fairly like sections found on the 1911 larges at 18 millimeters and a width of just under 10 millimeters. I think that's one of the reasons I like this pen. It's very reminiscent of those 1911 larges, especially the Stormy Seas, that I often find myself using. And, you know, that's going to go ahead and bring us around to the writing sample. Pairing this up with Tomoe is a perfect match. The number 5 fine medium nib on the PCH92 is smooth with just enough feedback to let me know the nib is touching the page. Sure, I'm not getting the squeaky smooth feel that I've gotten from a steel nib or two, but this level of feedback is still in the realm of enjoyable. The first thing I've noticed on this pen is that the line width is right there with European fine nibs bordering on a wet extra fine. It does this though while providing consistent flow and allowing a Roshizuku Seiro to really show off what makes it a good ink. I'm not finding the feed to be temperamental. Line width is consistent, if I remember how to properly hold a fountain pen. And the substantial amount of ink held by this piston filler, I'm just not worried about having to constantly refill. That last part is a bit of a tangent, but it is still an important thing to note. One last part to touch on though, is the balance. This pen may be postable, but I don't find myself needing or wanting to in the slightest. The weight is perfectly set to where the pen isn't nib heavy while I'm doing my writing. That is one area where I think Pilot consistently excels each and every time. Overall though, if you couldn't tell, this pen is a keeper. Is it a $200 keeper? Well, that is a decision that you would have to make. If you do like me though, and find a nib width that you like and can pick it up for under $120, then yeah, this is a pen that you should never think twice about adding to the collection. And that's going to do it for a look at the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. If you like that video or found it useful, then hit that like button, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.